Hello my friends, this is Humanox and in today's video I want to give you a brief overview of uh, how I created my recent track which was called Torn Apart, how I found some sounds for it and how I actually started the composition uh, on the Digitect itself. So uh, I won't go through everything because uh, this would actually be a much too long video if I would do that, so I will try to focus on a couple of things that I think are worth showing you guys. Now I wanted to do something new something I never, never did before. This was uh, more or less a challenge that I set for myself. And uh, it has a little bit, like I've mentioned in the video itself, it uh, has to do with my current life situation, not knowing what the future brings and everything. And um, as I've uploaded my last video before Torn Apart and noticed that it did not get so much attention from you guys, I thought, okay, Tech House and the like and stuff is probably not what uh, you guys are currently interested in. And uh, I also thought it was about time to do something bigger, something uh, more elaborate on that Digitect. And uh, yeah, I was actually looking around, finding ideas uh, in which direction I want to go. And I came to uh, the website from a sample library manufacturer, which is called Heaviosity. And I <laughs> had to listen to their demo tracks and everything and saw how these were constructed. And I thought, yeah, okay. Nice. This is something I want to try on the Digitech now. And uh, I was almost about acquiring these libraries until I've noticed how amazingly expensive they are. And so the search continued on the net to find sounds which are equally great, but uh, at least not as expensive. And it turned out that I found these sounds to be completely free of charge. And you find them over at 99sounds.org. They have huge palette of libraries which are very, very great and which have an amazing high quality to them. And um, the sounds that I've used uh, were the Cinematic Sound Effects Library, Project Pegasus, Punching Percussion, Rumor Cinematic Impacts, and I think a little bit of uh, samples of Tina Lach, I, I guess. Not so sure, but. Um, most of the samples that I'm using on the Digitect are coming from these libraries. And uh, I started basically with a basic pattern and um, I started with an Atmo sound, which sounds like this. This is the Atmo sound, which is the fundament for the whole track and it is used everywhere. And the pattern for it is absolutely simple. It's just has a little bit of its low frequencies uh, removed with the filter, as you can see right here, and there's nothing more to it. As you can see, it has a trick condition because uh, the patterns are 64 steps, and if you let this run, this is the first pattern where everything starts, and if you let this run, you can see it exceeds these uh, lamps for quite some time. So with the trick condition of 1-4, I make sure that this step is only triggered once for uh, every four repeat of the pattern. So it is triggered once when I start the pattern and it's when not triggered until it has repeated four times. So I can make sure that uh, this thing can run through almost till the end until it re-triggers. And um, this is the sound where everything starts with. And I have a lot of samples inside. I've uh, more or less put them in here, industrial stuff. <laughs> uh, no, a lot of samples, as you can see, these are the ones that I'm use. And uh, these come from these libraries. And um, the libraries are really great. They have a lot of hits and brams and risers and everything. And um, But I had a problem. <laughs> because although they have so much great sounds for the background and for the actual sounds that I can use, they do not have drums. And then that was an issue. And uh, I was looking on the internet and I found a free sound font collection of kind of orchestra sounds and everything. I think I was searching for orchestra sounds on uh, Google and I don't know, page two, three or four or something, I found a random forum where someone has uh, linked, uh, download links for, uh, yeah, for a free sound font library. Now, okay, I was thinking about how can I use these sound fonts. So I was looking on the net and found a web, uh, an application called Forsando, and this one is cool. I can drag these sound fonts inside, and it's converting these in the background to WAV files, which I can then use in Ableton Live uh, to extract the sounds that I actually want. So I was looking around, and I found one thing. I can't remember its name anymore, and it has samples inside, which are hits that are amazing that I wanted to use for these. 
So I've threw this into Ableton Live and uh, actually uh, sliced these um, samples up so that they have the individual hits. And these are the ones that I've put on the DigiTech. Let's have a listen to them. You can see the way they are organized is they are almost sounding the same, but they are not sounding the same at all. So they are different. They are really, really great. They have variation inside that I can use to construct a pattern. And let's quickly move to this pattern and let's mute everything. And uh, inside of this pattern, this is actually the pattern I first started with because this is always the way I work. I start with a pattern where I throw stuff in that I want to be in there at some point in time. And from this pattern, I will then create transitions, uh, random transitions and everything. And I uh, more or less think about how I can construct this. This is the drum loop that I have. And you can see it has these different hits and somehow sometimes they are pitched. And here we go. This is a sample assignment on a trick. So I assign different samples per trick. And I was more or less shifting these around somehow. You can see 12, 12, 11 and everything. 13, here they are not. And you see they are different. And when we play this loop back, uh, also there are uh, yeah, volume changes to fake velocity here. And when we play this thing back, it uh, sounds a little bit more, yeah, it has more variety in it. And here we have trick conditions, which uh, this thing is uh, played the second time uh, when the pattern repeats. This is how I made it. And um, also to not make the sound so static, I've used a lot of uh, micro timing on individual steps, as you can see right here, quite a lot of micro timing going on. And this happens for all of them, or at least most of them. Some are on grid, some are not. And this loosens up the beat a little bit and doesn't make it so static. And this was also important for me because I think it uh, fits to this style of music a little bit. And that's how the drum loop was constructed. And right after that, I was thinking about, okay, I uh, have this one. This is my main ad mode here. What else can I put to this thing? And so I came up with this sound. This is another ad mode which is also uh, running around in the background quite a lot. I have various other things inside. These are just the default sounds as you see. Here's a melodic element which comes in later. And this is also not a sign. And this melodic element, by the way, is just a simple um, single cycle waveform coming from the library of the Digitect itself. And has filter envelope as you can see fading in a little bit rising in going down again and I'm using this one a couple of times on the melodic parts but um, yeah let's quickly unmute all of these and let's see you can see how it comes in and this kind of like a fake delay as you can see I've achieved this by bringing the sound in Yet again, 1-4, because I, on, uh, I want this thing to only be there at the beginning, and uh, after that it should not be there. And now I had these trickless tricks, and they are modifying the volume, as you can see here. It's full volume, zero, full volume, zero, full volume, zero. So kind of a fake delay, so to say, if you want, because the delay itself uh, sounds different. I set it up in a different way at a speed of 8. It's a little bit faster. Um, yeah, it's hard to describe for me, guys. <laughs> it's just uh, because I do not really think about these things. I just don't think about it. I dial the stuff in and I listen to it. And does it sound cool? Yeah, it does sound cool. Okay, use it. Anyway, I don't care about the technical things so much when I do these things. And so the only thing I made, I made the reverb a little bit bigger here and everything. And this is all trial and error and just uh, trying to figure out does it sound or does it not sound? 
and dialing around on these things until it sounds and not caring so much about what I actually did. Anyway, okay, so basically that was the, that was the basic pattern right here with, with all the individual sounds inside and uh, from where on I tried to create these different uh, transition patterns and I did this by um, taking sounds away, getting new sounds in. We can hear this on this track, for example. Here the sounds are still inside. Oops, this is the wrong, this is the pattern. I switched the track. <laughs> See? See again, this one. And I'm heavily using the fact that the Digitect is storing all of its um, sounds, all of its uh, settings actually, the sound assignments and everything uh, on a per pattern basis and uh, not like it's working on big machines where it is stored inside of kits and I really like that it is working like this on the Digitect because this allows me um, to change sounds on a per pattern basis. It's, it, it, how should I describe this? It just makes stuff so much easier. You know, it makes stuff just so much easier. I can copy a pattern, I can throw these sounds around, I can assign new sounds right here just the way I want and do not have to uh, take care uh, about the fact that this is changed for the whole patterns, but just for this very single pattern. This is something I'm using quite a lot and more or less on each and every pattern. So here I'm uh, using just this, yeah, these are this, the drum sounds just filtered out a little bit. So we have a, 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 come on, anyway, it's hard to describe, you know, because there's so much going on and uh, it's really hard to focus on something here. And that's why, uh, that's because I always do not have a clue what I do. I just do, you know, I don't think about things. I just do. I throw the stuff in and uh, it's the moment I hear something the moment something comes to mind and I do it in exactly that moment and minutes later I already forgot it, you know, this is how I work and that's why it's a little bit hard to describe <laughs> what I have actually done here, but I try guys, I try and uh, yeah, but basically it was uh, like this, I was creating these drums and brought a drum loop in and from there on I um, copied this pattern to the place number five so that I have some stuff in between here and I then switched sounds around on these tracks. So on this first pattern, for example, on the fifth pattern, here's our, our drum sound and on this first pattern, there's something different on top. And this is, uh, I think it's a yeah, deep sci-fi, comes from one of these 99, sound, uh, 99 sounds libraries. Let's see how it's built and yeah. Seems there's nothing really parameter locked on this one, but on this one. And um, here's another point. When I'm working with so much patterns, I have a little bit of a structure in these patterns. As you can see, I have patterns one, two, when a pattern is empty, and four, five, six, seven, another pattern is empty, nine, ten, yet again an empty pattern, and from then on, 12, 13, 14, and so on. And the reason why I do this is, is I've programmed these patterns with different lengths in mind using trick conditions primarily. I'm uh, having patterns one and two. They can cycle for four times until I need to switch the pattern. This has to do with the fact that there's a melody inside here. As you can see, it's a melody and this melody has different trick conditions. This is the first, this is the second and it also has different notes. This is how I make um, the melodies. Actually, so let's quickly isolate this thing. Let's have a listen to it. F3. And now I think it's this one, yeah? E3. And to make it roughly trigger on the first step, I've micro-timed it towards the, towards the left, so that it's roughly on this spot. See? And we also can hear something's changing on that first step again. And this is done with this step trigger uh, set all the way to the right and um, did something here. Yeah, it's not so important what I did here because this is all trial and error. It's just I'm using the trick conditions to uh, fill this pattern up 
with uh, random sounds with uh, a melody progression, so to say. And I'm using different steps for that. And um, because I'm using four, three, four, three, four, should be somewhere, I don't know. But <coughs> the basic principle behind this is I have patterns which can run for a different length. And the first pattern and the second pattern, they can run for four times. And uh, as they can cycle four times, and these other can cycle just two times. This is how they are constructed. And to not get confused while I play, while I play these patterns, I left, I keep a pattern in between empty so that I know here these patterns can only cycle for two times, these can cycle four times. Uh, it's just um, so that I don't get confused when I play these things back. And um, yeah. Now this one I've created some additional melodies and everything and I've introduced pads on this thing. Uh, nah, sorry, not on this one. On this one. Here we have some pads inside, I think. No? Nah. Yeah, here. So this is the section where the pads come in. And these pads These pads are prepared in the DAW. I've prepared them in Ableton Live. And um, I did this by yet again taking this, my base app mo, and I threw this in Ableton Live. And when inside of Ableton Live, I first tried to figure out which key all of this could be in. And I've noticed, uh, okay, it's D. It seems that it's D, but uh, I was unsure. And so I went back to the Digitect itself and here we have this. Um, let's go to this first pattern and uh, can I show you this? Let's see. I don't know. Can I do this right now? Should be, yeah. And so I was. Tapping around on these steps, trying to figure out which notes I can use. And I found out, okay, this is D. So I don't know which scale that is, could be D minor or something, I have no clue, but I've used this as a reference for Ableton Live to find notes that are inside of this chord, uh, that are inside of the scale and that fit to this very Atmo. And so I went into Ableton Live and tried to find sounds which are cool and I found them in Project Pegasus sound library. This library has uh, somewhere right here, there's a folder called instruments and there are little, there are some pretty long sustained sounds inside which can make up for some great pads, you know. And as you can see, there are also some NKIs available. So if you have contact, um, you get these sounds laid out for you when you are using contact already. But for me, it was also not a big problem in Ableton Live itself because I just simply took one of these and uh, threw them into Simpler, deactivated the warping so that it's not trying to time stretch the stuff and everything. And yeah, then I just simply programmed some chords. And uh, this can take a while. I won't show you how I got these chords <laughs> because I have no music theory background. So I just throw notes in and I judge by ear, does it sound cool or does it not sound cool? And yeah, what I then did as I had this progression, I uh, threw a chorus on top just so that there's a little bit of uh, additional movement inside and filtered these things down on the Digitech itself. And let's see, process in the DAW. Yeah, this should be the library. And where's this thing? Into strings. And that's basically the stuff that I came up with. And if we have uh, a look at this pattern where the chords are, we can see that this is the way I worked here. 
I have these individual chord hits inside a whole progression, so inside one loop and when. Um, to trigger these, I'm triggering wherever they are, I'm triggering different portions of it, as you can see. Here it's not, and here a different portion is triggered so that I uh, actually build these things up and where I have different filter settings, so they slowly come in until they fade out in the end again. And yeah, this is uh, actually fairly standard, fairly simple. But um, that was the way I made these chords and everything. And on these sounds right here, there are a lot of sounds inside and really it's, I can't go through everything guys, sorry for that. But just one final thing, organized in different banks as well. And these are sounds uh, which are heavily used. These are creating these kind of metallic, these uh, is something, uh, let's see, there's a lot muted again. Yeah, so these are yet again different sounds. 46, Janadin, this is a Bram that I've used from the Cinematic uh, Sound Effects Library. And let's see if we can find this one how it sounds. Yeah, this one. And I've used this a couple of times with different settings. Yet again, a lot of lots of trick conditions and everything, different lamps and whatnot. And I think I've also worked on the bitrate reduction right here. Yeah, you can see it's uh, turned up. And these kind of melodic not so melodic, but uh, weird stuff. I've worked on the tuning as well of these things. And yeah, I just fiddled around and until it fits, you know, this is just the way I work. And that's the cool thing. I, I That's what I really like about the Digitect and what I like about the Electron machine is in general. You can just play around. You do not have to know what you are doing. You can just do. And this is the way I work. And that's why it's also a little bit hard to describe what I have actually done, but um, I hope this has given you at least a little insight into uh, what I did. It's I know it's uh, there are still a lot of questions left. I'm almost sure, <laughs> but um, yeah. To sum things up, what I did is I've searched for samples on the net that might suit uh, this particular style that I had in mind and. Um, I threw them on the Digitect, I've prepared them in the DAW, I made chords in the DAW that I then exported as a loop and threw them on the Digitect. And um, I had sounds on this thing, sounds used that were created with the individual waveforms like this FM1 for example. These individual waveforms from the Digitex library itself and um, also some boomy sounds and everything that I've uh, did like this, like this is uh, in that quiet section here. This thing in the background. So I've used tons of trick conditions. I've used uh, the fact that Every sound assignment is stored on a per pattern basis. So I do not have to worry about overwriting sounds on different patterns, so to say, by uh, which is quite easily possible on rhythm and stuff. And, and, and you know where all of this shit is stored inside of kits. And I really like that it is not working like this on the Digitect. So I can focus on one single pattern, make the pattern sound the way I want, and do the next pattern without worrying that something will override or change anything that I had before. And I've used this to my advantage here, built this all up, as I said before, lots of trick conditions and everything with patterns with different lengths in mind, which I organize like this with um, some patterns in between that are empty so that I know four can repeat four times, can repeat two times, can repeat four times, can repeat two times and stuff like that. And just build all these transitions with the help of trick conditions and play them one after the other. And that's the way I did it. And yeah, 
Okay guys, I hope this has given you at least a little insight into what I was doing. I know <laughs> it wasn't, it probably wasn't as deep as you wished, but uh, it's really hard for me to show you these things because I do the stuff and I don't know what I'm doing. I just do it. Okay. But anyway, if you have further questions, leave them down in the comments. I see what I can do to answer them. And um, yeah, I would say I see you in the next video, guys. Bye.